You should never EQ before you compress, or should you always EQ before you compress? I probably should have put this in my last video on bad mixing advice. Today, we're gonna to jump into Pro Tools and we're gonna compare the differences of EQing before and after compression so that way you can better understand what you should do in every situation. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Now, there are very specific instances in which I think that you should EQ before you compress, and there are very specific instances when I think you should EQ after you compress, and it has everything to do with how a compressor reacts to the information that's being given to it. Also in this video, we're gonna give away a pair of studio monitors, so stay tuned for that. I have all the details on how you can win a pair of studio monitors at the end of the video. Now, in addition to EQ before or after compression, we're also gonna have a look at sidechain compression. I'm gonna go over how that works as well, because it's a, it's a part of this conversation for sure. Before we jump into Pro Tools, there'll be links down below for the plugins that I'm using here. Uh, and those links go to Sweetwater and Sweetwater is sponsoring this video. Anytime you guys need any piece of gear of any kind, you can jump on any one of my videos and click on any one of the links down below. And once you're on the site, you can purchase anything that you need. And when you do that, it costs you nothing extra and it helps me out a whole bunch. It helps me keep making videos just like this. So thank you to you guys for using those links. Anytime you need anything, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into Pro Tools. Okay, so we're gonna start off with bass guitar because it's one of the easier examples to get this point across. Now, the one thing that we have to touch on first is that low end triggers compressors more than top end. Low end has more energy. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it will eat up headroom in your mix. It's one of the reasons why it triggers compressors more. It taxes the system that you're listening on more because it takes more power, more watts to reproduce low end with the speaker because the speaker has to move so much more to reproduce low end than it does mid range or top end. So low end affects everything much more drastically than mid-range or top end. So right here we've got uh, the FabFilter Pro Q3, and then we're going into the FabFilter Pro C2, links down below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push up some low end, around 100 hertz, and I want you to watch the gain reduction, which is this red meter right here, and I want you to watch how as I push more low end up, and that's feeding the compressor, the more it compresses. Here we go. See how much more that's compressing now? Now another thing I want you to listen to is how the tonal character changed. Now obviously it changed because we're boosting a bunch of low end, but it changes in a completely different way. Let me bypass the compressor and just push the low end up. So listen to this. So you can hear how the bass is just getting more low end, but the mid range is not changing at all. Now, when we put the compressor in, as I push this low end up, I want you to listen to how the mid range and top end goes away. It gets more compressed because the more low end we pump into the compressor, the more it's compressing and turning the signal down, which means it's turning down all the frequency ranges, the whole signal at the same time, which means as we push low end up into the compressor, we're getting less mid-range and top end out of the signal. Here we go. See how when we bypass that, all that mid-range comes back? Okay, now same thing with the attack the upper mid range in this case. If we play this, when you hear those pick strokes on the bass guitar, if we want to accent, if we want to compress those more, so that way they are less obvious, we can push up some of that upper mid range when we're EQing before compression. Here we go.
Watch these dips over here in the compressor. If you can't hear this, watch those dips and you can see how the attack, obviously we're changing the tonal characteristic because upper mid range doesn't trigger compression as hard as low end, but we're also compressing the attack of those more. So here we go. So you can see these attacks right here that aren't getting compressed nearly as much when we pull that down. So this is how you choose. Now, obviously, if you're EQing after compression, then it, it doesn't, none of this happens. Like the compressor just reacts. So when you're EQing before compression, in my opinion, you should make a conscious effort. You're making EQ moves so that way you trigger the compression in the way that you want. If you're EQing after compression, you're just managing the overall tonal balance of the instrument or of the vocal. So for instance, let's say we want to control those attacks on this bass guitar a bunch. So we might push this upper mid range up into the compressor, and then we'll put another EQ after the compressor to pull that back down. Let's try that, here we go. Okay, so now we are compressing those attacks pretty drastically. But if we go over here to uh, our channel and let's put another EQ after that and let's pull that range back down. Here we go. Oh, it's somewhere about there bypass all these and listen. Okay, still got a little a bit too much. So what we're able to do in this case is we're able to push those upper mid-range attacks up into the compressor so that way it compresses more so that way then we can adjust the amount of presence we want in the bass guitar without those attacks being just way too much because we're shaping that we're EQing before the compressor to adjust how the compressor reacts and we're EQing after the compressor to shape tone. And that is how I want you to think about EQ before or after compression. The same principle applies to absolutely everything. On a kick drum, you want your uh, the bottom end of your kick drum to trigger the compressor less. Then you know you want to EQ it before the compressor. But that's kind of where we start getting into side chaining, because on this compressor is one of the easiest to do side chain. Let's turn both of these EQs off. And so if we open up side chain here and all we got to do is turn this on. Now this is our side chain. So basically this is an EQ that controls what the detector circuit of the compressor sees without it changing the tonal character of the compressor. This is kind of my favorite way to do this. Uh, so let's say we want to control the attack of that bass the same as we did before, but we want to do it without changing the overall tonal character of it. So we just take this EQ band here, and we start pushing it up. Now you can see how these peaks are really getting exaggerated, but we didn't change the tonal balance of it really. Now, same, same thing with the low end. Uh, let's say that the, all the notes in that chord progression aren't exactly the same. So you would find the notes that are the quietest and you would make a narrow peak like this, a narrow cue, and then you would start compressing, uh, feeding that up into the compressor more. So that way, uh, or sorry, on the loudest notes, the, the notes in the chord progression that are the loudest, we would push those up slightly into the compressor so that way it turns those down a little bit more than it does the quietest notes in the low end. So that note right there is the loudest. Do you 
here it's turning it down too much. Something like that. And so this is one of the ways, it's, it's very easy to show this on bass guitar. This is one of the ways where uh, this is how I keep the low end consistent throughout a progression, a chord progression in a mix. Or same thing with the vocal. If the vocal has like a particularly nasal character when they sing high, but is too muddy when they sing low, I will often find the point in which it is too nasally when they sing high, and I use this side chain technique to make the compressor compress, uh, to make the compressor compress more when they're singing that upper nasally character. This is side chain compression. You can do this a million different ways. You can use this on every single instrument, but this is the principle in how you get side chain compression going and when you would use it. Okay, before we wrap up this compression versus EQ before and after topic, uh, we're gonna give away a pair of Oritones. This is a custom one-off red pair of Oritones. They're the active model, so you don't need any power amp, uh, just like any other studio monitors. You guys know how much I love Oritone and I use them on every single song that I work on for like eight or 10 years now. They're a huge part of letting me do what I can do, and my magic is in the mid-range video mix tutorial. That's the most popular mix tutorial I've ever done. Uh, this, is, this is the secret. This is the secret sauce. So all you gotta do, uh, there's instructions down below on how to enter. I will not be replying to your comment down below. You will get an email from me directly saying that you have won. I'm not gonna ask for any money. You're not gonna be uh, required to do any shipping costs or anything like that. Uh, this is limited to uh, the lower 48 states of the US though, so only uh, no Hawaii and no Alaska and only US. But all you gotta do is follow me on Instagram, it's down below. Follow Oratone on Instagram, it's down below. And then send an email to me down below with your Instagram handle. That's it. That's all there is to enter. We'll be announcing the winner uh, like 1st of January-ish area. And uh, yeah, the, please please enter. I I'm, I'm really want you guys to have these speakers because they I love them and this is a cool set anyway. Okay, EQ before or after compression. I hope that this gave you a better understanding of when to do each because I think it's important that we don't put ourselves in a box here. If anyone tells you that you should always EQ before compression, or you should never EQ before compression, they're wrong. They're like, they're just flat out wrong. It depends on what you are wanting to accomplish. Now I will say that most of the time, I'm compressing after I EQ. So I EQ to get the general sound the way that I want it, and then I compress after that. But it, there are plenty of times where I want to shape the tonal character of something, but I don't want to change the compression character of that thing, and that's when you EQ after compression. It's that simple. There is no right or wrong here. We, we all need to use our ears, and if it sounds good, it is good. There are no rules in this. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the links in the description. Don't forget to enter the Oratone giveaway. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah.